Alright, so just wanted to do like a real short video here explaining some of the uh, different things here in the config file for Salig. Now, just so everyone's aware, it's not recommended that you go messing with any of these values just simply because you could very easily break the game. Which I which I figured out how to do very quickly after this was released, but uh, so yeah, what you're seeing here is the config file for Salig, and I'll leave um, I'll leave a, a a link, not necessarily a link, but like the uh, the the directory path to follow if you're in Windows to to get to this. So. All right, config file for various settings in Salig. Each time the game starts, this file is loaded and checked. If there are any errors found, the default settings will be used to reset all these settings to default, delete this file, and it will be regenerated. Remember that, because if you mess up and you're not sure where, just delete the file, relaunch Salig, it'll regenerate. All right, do not, do not remove any lines. The values preceded by a hashtag are the default values removing these will break your config only change the value directly after the equal sign that's important now for performance reasons we'll, well, we'll go through all of these right here so we start out with uh, population variables so the default population limit for all maps on Salig is 300 and that's represented here as at the, after the hashtag is 300 now I've changed mine to 500 and trust me when I tell you, it definitely t causes a major performance impact when you go above this 300 value. It's been technically playable, but uh, not not great. So that's what I did. And then we have here the number of children two AI parents can have. Custom value must be two or more. AI family child limit is six. I just left that one alone just so they don't run rampant and overpopulate everything. And then the next one is the number of children the player can have at any one time. Custom value maybe two or more. I set mine to 12 because, well, I wanted my family to take over the map. <clears throat> I think that's pretty reasonable. And then we have our social classes. These variables, variables, oh, there's a, there's a typo right there, Mr. Atacop relate to the asset values required to attain social classes and the max property that each class can own. By default, we have zero for Jebra, which is like the, beg the beggar class. Je Gebra? Jebra? I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Uh, then the second class, Kotsetla, default is three. I set it to four. And Geniat, uh, default is 50. I set it to 75. Uh, not really because I needed to. I've never hit that limit. But you never know, maybe I want to buy the whole map. And then, obviously you don't need a gold or silver requirement for Jebra, since you start out literally with nothing if you're a beggar class. I guess you might have a few gold. But uh, Kotsetla is... Four th uh, it's default 2,000, I set it to 4,000, and same with uh, the Geniat, I, I went from 15,000 on the def default to 25,000. Just because I noticed on my current playthrough, with such a high population that I've set here, there's a lot more Geniats. Uh, it's, so I, I, I decided to make it a little bit harder for them to attain that class. Now this one's important, Raiders. Because uh, I, I found that the Raiders, they, they especially if you play an X4 time speed movement as often as I do, uh, there tends to be a lot more raids than I care to deal with. Uh, I don't remember what the def <laughs> I don't remember what the defaults were for this, but uh, see, this value is expressed as a range, and the actual time a raid is triggered is a random value within this range. Day length represents the length of your in-game day in seconds. So I don't remember what the actual default was, but I did increase these because this is the range here. I, I just increased them to random numbers, not anything too crazy, just to kind of make the raids a little rarer, it, it, and it has worked, which has been kind of nice. And then we scroll down and we get into base item prices. Now, I've modified all of these prices, as you can see, because we, you know, we got default to 7 for wheat, uh, we got default 21 for fish cake, set it to 24, and the reason 
I don't recommend messing with these too much unless you really feel like cheating and you want to make thousands of silver for one item. Which you, I mean, I guess you can do because th these are base prices. This isn't. This doesn't reflect the actual price that you'll see in the marketplace. The, the, this this price is the lowest that it can possibly go in the marketplace. But uh, that's if. And, and the only time it'll hit this base price is if there's like an overload of the item in the marketplace. So the the top price, the most that you can get from it is calculated from this base price. So if you do a twenty percent increase on the base price, then you'll get a 20% increase on the full price that you could possibly get for selling or buying something. But because I set the population limit, what I what I noticed, and this, this may not necessarily be uh, true, but it's just an observation that I made, was uh, with so many more people on the map, there seems to be a lot more silver circulating on the map. Because you got to think with the, the more people that come in you know buy things or sell things to wandering traders and things like that so more currency is in the map so i was having a problem with the market being almost empty all the time because people had more money than usual and the prices of everything hadn't really changed so with more money more stuff was being bought and you know you know how the cycle goes so I decided to do about a 20% increase, roughly. I didn't actually calculate all of these. I just kind of estimated what 20% would be in price increase on all these items to kind of suck out a lot of that currency. And it seems to have worked. Um, but I'm not going to go through every single item here. Uh, you can kind of make that determination for yourself. But yeah, that was been this quick little tutorial on Salig's new config file. And Adderkop has said that there are more options coming in the future. So I look forward to that.